All right, guys. Sorry I haven't been putting out many videos recently. I just kind of been trying to get things uh, situated here where we are at our bug out location. Uh, I got some dead trees today that I'm going to be taking out and I wanted to show you guys how I do that with just a hatchet and a handsaw. Uh, these two things can be thrown in a pack and they're fairly light. You'd be surprised how much work you could get done for shelter building and whatnot with just these two things. Before we get into this video, we're going to talk a little bit about safety. Uh, this video is by no means a how-to video. It's just a uh, video on the practice of falling trees. There's a million videos made on proper falling of trees or felling of trees. Um, some of the common mistakes I can tell you guys about. Um, for instance, let's spin this around. We got an oak tree here that's really leaning. There's a lot of uh, pressure in a tree that's leaning that you have to try to figure out how to release that pressure in a safe manner. Good chance of a barber chair happening with this tree. Especially with all the rot. And you can see that rot goes up. At least right in here. This doesn't look too healthy. Trees that don't have branches in the lower part much more likely to barber chair. Like for instance, this tree's got plenty of branches on it. The chance of barber chair is a lot less on a tree that has a bunch of branches versus one that doesn't have any branches because as you know, branches make a tree harder to split. We've all experienced that splitting rounds. Rotted trees that are leaning, don't even touch them. Have a professional do it. Uh, I think according to OSHA, they say over six inches you shouldn't be falling a tree that's larger than six inches in diameter if you are inexperienced. Uh, one of the main reasons why you want to avoid trees that are rotted is because you, when you make your wedge cut and you come in for your back cut, you're expecting that wood in there to be solid. That's your holding wood, your hinge wood. And if that hinge wood or holding wood is rotted and spongy in there, it doesn't do you really any bit of good. There's also, I've cut into trees that looked healthy, and when you get your saw into it, you can feel that it's soft. It's, the wood is just all rotted. There's a couple techniques that people use to avoid barber chair on trees that are leaning. You can look up those videos. Uh, guys make a bore cut instead of a back cut, and that leaves uh, a strap. On the back of the tree and then you actually cut out back towards the other side of the tree finishing your back cut and the tree falls without with less of a chance of barber chair I could put some uh, links to some really good videos below and you guys should definitely go check those out they made a better video than I ever could about all that stuff so this is a pretty small what is this uh, cedar Yeah, it's a pretty small cedar here that I'm going to be cutting down. And I'll show you guys kind of how I like to do that. Um, with smaller trees, these techniques, it doesn't really matter if you mess up. But with really large trees, there's a whole bunch of things that can happen with the amount of pressure that's being released. Just because there's a multitude of things that can go wrong. Um, being that this saw is curved, when you make your back cut... It's going to be cutting more here and here. You have less control over the tree because the holding wood is getting cut from the left and the right before the center. So I did notice that there is a difference. Um, if you're going to be falling larger trees, your back cut, you should be making with a straight saw, not something that's curved like this. All right. So for this tree, the biggest thing is it's probably going to get hung up in the branches up above from these other trees. Um, looks like it is also leaning in the direction we need. So. All right. I'm gonna come back here and make just a square. This is for my wedge cut. I'm just making a little way into the tree, making a square cut. 
This kind of gives me an indication when I'm making my wedge cut with this hatchet. Alright guys, so this is my wedge cut. Um, I went a little too deep. That's over a third, but that doesn't matter on small trees. If you go over a third when you're cutting a huge tree down, that's a real big hazard. So you want to make sure that you take your time and you do everything just right when you're falling big trees. This is just a small guy, so it's not going to be a problem. All right. So these are just kind of some guide marks. You want to come in kind of at the at the V in your notch for your back cut. So you make these little kind of indicators, chase that line around, and that can kind of show you where you want to start for your back cut. And here we go. Sometimes you can kind of give it a little love. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what we talk about when we say holding wood. This little bit of wood fibers that pull out of the tree you can also see maybe I can show you you can kind of it's kind of hard to see but you can see in there where those fibers pulled out of the tree that's your holding wood this is how you control the tree as it's falling one thing I want you to notice get this saw in here and show you see how that curved blade creates curve in your holding wood now if I wanted the tree to roll that direction as it falls kind of roll off that direction the end I would saw more like this that's cutting the holding wood from this side and there's still holding wood here. That's gonna create kind of a roll as it falls off the stump. In retrospect, I probably should have done that because it got hung up in all these branches up here. Now, that roll can be really useful because once you get kind of a little bit of a roll going, a lot of times the branches will catch into another tree and it kind of facilitates more of a roll. Now, the fact that my holding wood Sorry, I'm a little out of breath from sawing this. The fact that my holding wood is getting cut from the left and to the right makes it a little bit more unpredictable. If the saw was straight, of course you'd be coming in, making your cut all the way across. So that's why I said, um, obviously you couldn't cut down too big a tree with this, but any saw that's bent, like those big silky saws, you're gonna wanna watch out when you're sawing trees down, when you're making your back cut. <laughs> All right, guys, now I just got to break these branches off and carry this dry wood up the hill. <laughs> 